Hi Taurus, this is Teresa from Tara by T. Welcome to February and happy Valentine's Day. And before I get started on your reading, I want to call in some good energy. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for commenting. I really enjoy reading the comments. And thank you for your support. If you're new, welcome. And um, for those who have ordered readings, I really value um, your business and your support. And I've enjoyed meeting every one of you. So this month we have a um, new moon in Aquarius. And um, that will be on February 4th. And a full moon in Virgo on February 19th. And um, these moons are... They've got favorable energy connected with them. So we get a break this month. <laughs> this is actually a good time to start something. So let's see what's going on for Taurus. I'm going to make this a love, this is going to be a love reading because of Valentine's Day. Going back to the love format. So what does Taurus need to know about love and relationships in the month of February? What is coming up for Taurus in terms of love and relationships for Taurus? What's coming up? What does Taurus need to know? about love and relationships in the month of February. Okay. Page of Cups. The Seven of Cups. The Empress. The Ace of Cups. The Nine of Pentacles. The Four of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Knight of Swords, the Eight of Cups, and the Two of Swords. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so you start the month off with this Page of Cups. This is a message. Someone wants to communicate a message of love. Yeah, I feel like you might have two people... Um, that you're dealing with in the month of February. And um, you might be walking away from one of them because of this. There's a new relationship coming or a new opportunity. Uh, with the Page of Cups, this could represent, sometimes it can represent a child or someone or a love, the beginning stages of a relationship. So there could be someone that you're there's a potential to develop into a love relationship. This person is very sensitive, very artistic. This could even be you because it's, it's the first card. So maybe you have feelings for someone that you want to share, but you're not sure how to do it. You know, you want to, you're kind of like timid about it. Um, the Seven of Cups is crossing you. So this is a card of dreaming about something but not taking action so you're stuck in the choices you know you're like trying to decide what to do like what do i do do i reach out to this person do i communicate or do i you know wait for them to communicate with me you know what do i do um so you're in this state of confusion like you're not sure what's right for you is this relationship the right one do i make a move do i not make a move do i walk away you know what do i do so you're in this state of i don't know uh, trying to decide what to do. Um, the Empress is in the past. This is a card of family and motherhood. Um, it's a very maternal card. So for some of you, you may be really connected with your family. You might be focused on family and your children if you have children. For others, the, the Empress can mean a creative project, that you're very creative and you're nurturing and very nurturing. You, you know, you, because even if you don't have children, you could be feeling very motherly toward the person that you love. Like you're taking care of them like a mother takes. You know, you worry about them like a mother would worry about their child. Um, it could be that you're dealing with someone who's kind of childlike, got a childlike energy. And they need, you know, they need nurturing. They need someone to look out, look out for them. And 
you know, like a mother. Um, and you have this Ace of Cups here, so I, I feel like also there's a creative project brewing. Or there's something that, if it's a relationship, it's at the very beginning stages, and it needs to be nurtured the way you would, like, nurture, you know, an infant in the womb. Like, you have to just... It's not... It's something that needs time to develop. That's what I'm trying to say. So it could have already started, but not really... It's not ready to um, manifest so much. It's, it's just being nurtured. So you're going through the beginning stages of, you know, just getting to know each other, and things are moving very slowly. It's almost like, so I I'm, I'm almost want to say that if you start a relationship in February, it may take like nine months before you get to a point where you say, okay, we're in a relationship. I lo we love each other. You know, It's going to take time to develop. It's not going to be like an overnight hot and heavy thing. Um, you know, Some relationships, you meet someone and right away, boom, you're like in love and you're getting engaged and you're married. And that's not going to happen with this. This is a slow process, but it's going to be better because it's going to be based on, I could just see the tender feelings and based on creativity. You might be sharing, um, you know, you have a lot in common. You have things that you like to do together and you could have fun together. You could have, do, do, like work on a creative project together even. Um, the Ace of Cups is in the recent past, so you already know who this person is. I feel like you've already got this person. It may be somebody you already know or someone that you've already met. It's not like you're yet to meet them. They're in your, they, you know who they are. But, um, it's almost like you're waiting for them. <laughs> you're both of them. You're, you're both waiting for each person is waiting for the other person to take the f first step. I'm seeing the Nine of Pentacles here and the Four of Swords. So you might have been really working very hard. The Nine of Pentacles is someone who's uh, working on the, on a project by themselves. And, you know, you might have accumulated some, a certain amount of financial security. The Nine of Pentacles is a woman who's enjoying her house and she's in her garden. And... Um, She's got all these material things around her, but she's lonely. And she wants to have someone to share all this with. So you may be thinking like, you know, it's not enough to work hard and make money and have things if you don't have someone to share it with. And if, I don't, if you're not in a partnership, it's... So you may be feeling a little bit kind of lonely in February and looking for love. You're ready for love. And the Four of Swords is a card of rest and healing. So you may be coming. You may, you may have finished up a period where you were really working hard, where there was a lot of stress on the job, and you've been through a lot, and now you need to rest, because this is a card of taking time out to rest and to heal. So I think in February you really need to nurture yourself too with the mother here. <laughs> Don't be just a mother to everyone else. You have to be a mother to you. You have to honor that inner child and nurture yourself. And if your body is saying, hey, you know what, I just have to, I can't do anymore. You have to take time out to rest. You know, don't um, burn the candle at both ends in February. Now, here you have the Knight of Cups. So someone's gonna approach you in February. You've got this, uh, this is a proposal, a romantic, uh, this, this Knight of Cups is a romantic person. Romantic, artistic, it could be a water sign Sun, Moon, or Rising, so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. could be someone that you feel a karmic connection with. You have like a special chemistry with this person. You kind of like know each other. Um, and this person is very creative, very artistic. Um, they may have been away for a long time. You might have been, like you haven't seen them in a long time and they're coming back into your life. Um... But it's in your negative thinking sector. So you're kind of doubting that this is going to happen. You're doubting that you're going to receive this proposal or this offer of love. But I feel like it's coming. And maybe um, if it's not you who's been resting, maybe the, the person, maybe there's been a person that's been in a state of rest or a state of uh, needing time out to heal. 
And now that they're, after this healing is done, um, they're going to come back, you know, they're coming back out into the, into the world. <laughs> or it's like a homecoming with the Knight of Cups. Sometimes this card can mean someone who's gone away because they needed to find themselves or they needed to, you know, they felt like they needed to do something and they went out and they followed this path and they realized that this path is not, you know, it took them away from everything that they loved. And so now this is like a homecoming. It's like, I want to come home to the people I know and to the people I love who love me. So you might be connecting with people that you haven't seen in a while in February. In your environment, you have the Knight of Swords. So this could be, so you have like, this could be an air sign. A, uh, what is it? Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Um, this could also be Aries energy because this is a very hasty a person who is very restless and um, maybe a little argumentative, maybe a little on the selfish side. Um, I feel like if you're in a relationship with someone who's been very selfish and not thinking about others, you might be deciding to walk away from that person. Because here you have the Eight of Cups. You're walking away from something that was once good, but it's no longer serving you. It's no longer fulfilling. That could be a relationship. It could also be a career path. But I, this is there's a lot of cups in this reading, so I feel like it's more a relationship. So you're, you're wanting to move on to something that has more meaning. More, you're tired of being um, with someone who's only thinking of themselves. And that can be true of all relationships, not just romantic ones. So if you've been giving a lot of love out and getting very little back in return, you know, if there hasn't been this reciprocal energy, you might decide to just walk away from some people in February, thinking like, you know, I'm tired of giving. I'm tired of being the one always giving. I want someone to give to me. You know, I want to meet someone where there's more of an equal exchange. Even though you never really get equal. It's either 60-40, 40-60, you know. But it should be at least 60-40, 40-60, not 90-10, you know. So if you're in a 90-10 relationship and you're doing the 90 in terms of giving, it's time to have a change. And, you know, Taurus, Uranus is hitting us this month. Um. Uh, if not this month, I think in April, March or April. Uh, when when Uranus comes into Taurus, there's no no more stick in the mud for Taurus. <laughs> We're going to be blasting into a new universe with the energy of Uranus. So here you're, you're really seriously thinking about walking away from things that no longer serve you. And you could be leaving one relationship for a new one, moving away from... Um, people that don't value you, that that aren't giving you anything in return. So if you're in a relationship, where, like I said, um, that hasn't really been giving you the love you need, you might be moving on because of this new love that's just about, it's kind of like in the wings. I feel like it's in the wings. And you have to make this move first. You have the Two of Swords here as an outcome. Um, this is the key to you, because this is in your wish fulfillment sector. So the way to your wish fulfillment is by walking away from the current situation, walking toward the new situation. When you're ready to take that step, that's when things are going to start happening. Until then, you're going to be in limbo. You don't want to stay in limbo for long. Yeah, and here, this is a card of, of choices. This is a card of decisions. You know, you're stuck on the fence with a decision. And it could be like, do I leave this relationship that's not giving me anything? Do I approach someone that I'm kind of interested in and let them know that I like them? Here, you're wishing that this is a card of a stalemate situation. Like you're wanting someone else to make the move. You're wanting someone else to contact you. Like Taurus is not good at calling people. You know, we're like, we respond. We don't initiate, you know. Taurus is like, yeah, you call me, I'll go out with you. You know, but they don't like to pick up the phone and call someone. And that, you know, we have to get out of that. You have to get out of that. Sometimes you have to take the initiative. 
this is one of those times because otherwise nothing is you cuz so if two people are in that same mode you know it's okay if you're like the type of person that you're more passive and you're with someone who's more aggressive it's a, it's okay there's no problem but if two people who are kind of both passive each person waiting for the other one i mean you're not going to play ball if nobody picks up <laughs> you know somebody has to serve the ball to have a game so um, the ball is just like laying in the middle of the court. So you got to get it up and send it over the fence, okay? And I think that's when things are going to start to develop. So take time out if you need to, to decide what you want. Take time out to rest, but then at some point, uh, take action. So let's see what's happening. The new moon is in your 10th house. This is great for career. Sun, Moon, and Mercury are in your 10th house in Aquarius. And it is sextiled by Jupiter in your 8th. So this can bring money your way. But it could also bring passion. The 8th house, it's the house of financial support that you get from others. Like loans from a bank, inheritance, other people's money, taxes, inher you know, insurance payout. But it's also the house of intimacy and passion. So... And the 10th house, is, it could be career, you know, you could be making changes in your job and your career, bringing in more money, more, more financial support. But it could also be um, bringing in more love, a more intimate connection. And it could also, the 10th house can also mean a change in status. So you could be meeting someone that could have a really significant uh, impact on your life. Like you, you go from single to married or from being not with anybody to dating someone, you know, regularly. Um, it's your public, the 10th house is your public house. It's so people are going to, like if everyone's always seen you without a boyfriend or without a date or whatever, then you meet someone and now you're going to be a couple, you know, so your, your public image is changing. Um, Saturn and Neptune are sextile during this new moon and they're activating your 9th and 11th house. The ninth house is the house of long distance travel, higher education, um, spirituality. So if you if you decide to go back to school and get some training, you could meet someone there. Um, Neptune is the eleventh house. It's the house of dreams. It's a house of friendship. It's a house of group uh, connections. So it's good to join groups now. And this new moon is falling right at the midpoint between the ninth and the eleventh, between these two planets, Saturn and Neptune. So you have the potential to manifest a goal or a dream in February. So it's a good time to take action because this moon has a lot of positive energy. So February 4th, you know, you may want to wait till the 5th, let the, uh, the first crescent appear. Um... You can manifest a dream by taking practical action by uh, and it could actually affect it, it's actually a good time for career moves it's also a good time um, for those of you if you're planning on getting married it would be a good time for a new beginning too um, Venus is trining Uranus and Venus is in your 10th house and Uranus is in your 12th house so, they, you could have like a secret admirer come out of the woodwork, out of the blue, or you could be dealing with someone um, that you meet through either work or some institution like a hospital or a, um, that's interesting. When Uranus and Venus come together, it's unexpected. And it could bring, um, it could free you. It could, have, it, ha it could be an exciting and fun relationship. Um, there could be some weird psychological issues to deal with with the 12th house. But um, it's also a good time to figure out why am I, maybe this relationship can free you of some of your psychological blockages. Because it is a trine. And it's squaring Chiron Venus. So Chiron is in your 11th house. You know, it could be that um, 
you know, you could have a friendship become like you, maybe you've been friends with someone for a long time and that turns into love or you're there's like some kind of healing element there's a friendship that has a healing effect on you so this new beginning could really change your life in a positive way um, it could help you psychologically it could help you in a it could be like a healing have a healing influence on your life and also change the way you see yourself in the way your public image now the full moon happens in Virgo and so the moon is in Virgo and the sun's in Pisces. I mean, yeah, the sun's in Pisces. And that's coming across your 5th and 11th house. And it's trined by Mars in Taurus. So by the full moon, Mars is in Taurus. That's going to give you that fire, that energy to take action. Um, the 5th house is the house of love. The 11th house is the house of friendship. So whatever you start at the new moon can come to culmination by the full moon. So take action, take the initiative at the new moon and you'll see results by the full moon. And the fifth house is the house of love. It's also creativity, children, um, self-expression. So if you want to do, if you're, if you're not in a relationship, but you're involved in a creative project, get out there, take action, start it. Uh, you're going to be having fun, I think, in February. Maybe you've been working really hard. It's time to you know get away from work, push the desk away, <laughs> get away from the computer, get out and do something creative. Put your fingers in the paint, you know, play music, sing, dance, whatever you want to do that brings joy. Um, Saturn. So let's see. So Mercury and Neptune are conjunct in the eleventh house, and Venus and Saturn are coming together in your ninth house. So you could be, if you're in a relationship, if you meet someone in February, or if, you're, if a relationship starts to form, it could be that, um, it could be very romantic. And it could be with someone that's, um, could be of a different age group, or from a different culture. Someone who, you know, is different, very, very different from you. Um, but that could be what's exciting, that they're not the same old, same old, not, you know someone that you're used to. It's someone totally different, someone unique. Um, but someone stable, because Venus in Capricorn is, very, is stability, maturity. So it could be someone who has a mature outlook on life, but could be also handsome. But maybe you're a little bit reticent, like they're not very demonstrative. Because Venus in Capricorn is, you know, they worry about what people think. So they're not going to express, they're not going to go wild in public. But in private, they'll tell you how they feel, and they'll show you how much they love you. Um, so, love could be on for you in, in um, February, Taurus. So don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to drop your guard, because the Two of Swords is sometimes, you know, um, you need to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't fear rejection. Because I think there's some you have an admirer. There's someone around you that wants to get closer, but they need a little bit of a sign. Maybe you've been too um, standoffish. So, um, you know, stop working for a little bit in February. <laughs> Don't work so hard. Get out there, mingle, um, and leave anything behind that's no longer serving you. Um, leave a relationship if you're dealing with someone who's been only thinking of their own needs and not considering your feelings or your needs or not valuing the love that you've been offering, um, you need to walk away from that. And you need to claim the love that belongs to you. You need to be with someone that values you and loves you and it's there for you. You have that potential, but you have to make that decision to go and claim it. So don't be on the fence. Don't sit on the fence in February. February is the month of love, and plus we're having the new year, the new Chinese New Year, and it's the year of the pig. So any, if any of you are pigs, it's going to be a year of wealth and abundance. So let this new year, I think it starts the 5th, um, right after this new moon, we go right into the year, the Chinese New Year. So it's going to be a good month for Taurus. So claim your love. Stake your claim. <laughs> Get off. Uh, don't wait for the phone to ring. You need to pick up the phone. You need to take action. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Taurus. And if you'd like to have a reading, 
um, a private reading, just click on the link in the description box and we'll get that scheduled. In the meantime, enjoy February. Have a wonderful Valentine's. Much love and luck and prosperity to you. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.